Be careful because the cheese is hot, but also enjoy it. Embrace the moment. You are the cheese couscous infuser. Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well wherever you are in the world. Welcome to our kitchen today. We're doing another four, three, two, one uh, video. Basically four, three ingredient or items, which is generally the best thing because you get so much flavor in there for free. free flavor to try one time in your life. Part of an epic playlist, loads of inspiration, budget recipes for you to try, and most importantly, improve, put your own personal spin on with these three items. And we started adding saying water is an item for free, salt and pepper, stuff like that. Push it, push it real, no. But no, just extra flavors around the house, and I might even add butter today. I might do that actually, yeah. Today, this is my high-tech list. We are doing um, a couscous, we're doing a cheese and onion couscous cake. Cool, right? Classic dish here in the UK is called bangers and mash, basically sausage and mashed potato. We're gonna do chicken sausages with pesto, but there were loads of variations. They actually, I was in the supermarket last night going like that, looking at my list, and I was by the pesto aisle, and I'll come on to it, but I was like, wow. Generally wasted a solid seven to eight minutes just staring, going, yeah, but I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. I could. Hopefully you guys do this. Is it? Yeah. We've got a super easy trifle, which again, in the supermarket, I was like, ah, nah, let's just do this with it. And you can do it any way you want. And then a triple strawberry milkshake. First things first, we need some prep for our couscous cake and the mash. Boston, first up, couscous. This is by uh, a chap called Ainsley Harriet. This is his brand. Also doubles up as a musical instrument, but most importantly, this is flavored roasted vegetable couscous. It's free flavor. I feel like that should be my catchphrase for the 4321 playlist as we boil the kettle uh, to start to make the couscous. That's all it is, we just drench it in water, let it absorb it, all that stuff. But if you've got the chance to rather than buy bland, normal couscous, you can get a flavored one, do it. 320 ml of water. Oh wow! Tomato, onion, peppers, and garlic in there. And we're doing a cheese and onion one. I've got extra onions to add in there. Oh. I've also got some cheese that we're gonna add to this as well, eventually for the couscous cake. And the other ingredient is onion, although we've got a little bit in here already. That cheese and onion flavor combo should be awesome. I very nearly did a cauliflower cheese one because in the freezer aisle in the supermarket, they sell cauliflower cheese ready to go, which you can mix with this and then add in bacon as your third ingredient. That'd be amazing. Why didn't I do that? Damn it. You do that. Anyhow, that's been about a minute already and this water is slowly getting absorbed. We leave it for about five minutes and I need to get some potatoes on for my mash. This is a bit weird, uh, but I like to have my peel on my mashed potato. Free texture. And what we mix in with this, this is what really killed me in the supermarket last night. I was, should have only been there for five minutes. I was there for a long time. Mrs. B was getting worried. But the potential to mix in with this is outstanding. It doesn't matter, we're just literally mashing potato. And what I said about the butter earlier, I think I, I like to put milk in with here. I might put a little bit of butter, all right, just as a compromise. <laughs> Actually, no, we're gonna stay strong. We're not gonna do the butter because there's oils in the ingredients we're adding in. Anyhow, speaking of oil, I will use it for this, back to the couscous cake. So I was just pushing you to the mash dish and now I'm reeling you back into the couscous cake. Sorry, this is getting confusing. Frying pan, this is where the whole cake's gonna come together. We can bake it if we want, but we're gonna fry it. A smidgen of oil and something we seem to have loads of in our house. So cheap as well. A bag of frozen chopped onions. Yes, yeah, so we get that nice and coated in the oil and I've moved the potatoes just over there out of the way. So we're frying them up and getting them nice and charred. I was in the freezer aisle and they had like, I think I've used them on the playlist before. They had like fajita mixes. Uh, they had this like courgette summer vibey thing, like aubergines. I, I mean, yeah, basically you could put so much crazy cool stuff in here, but just the simplicity of the cheese and onion, loving it. Oh, the other cool thing about this is it's all chopped for you. You don't have to peel it, and obviously you don't get upset and emotional over chopping such a lovely root vegetable. So our couscous is nice and done. Um, I don't like it that much couscous. I make a lot for Mrs. B. Sometimes I do her lunch for her, and I do one with um, couscous, uh, pomegranate, and a little bit of mint in there. She really likes it, so yeah. She, <laughs> she probably says that and throws it in the bin or something as a McDonald's. But we've got our couscous, we've got our onions frying as well, and the third ingredient is gonna be cheese. Now I use this pepper jack cheese that they're selling in the supermarket. I'm basically taking advantage to use it because I don't think it's gonna be around there in a couple of months. And we had it the other day for that Bob's Burgers recipe and it was so good, plus free flavor. But it is laced with pepper and that is what is gonna glue and grip our onions and couscous to hold it when we fry it into the cake, okay? 
Here's the cheese. Now these were in slices, so it's a little bit fiddly for me. I've just broken it up. I'm gonna pour it in with the onions to melt it. Now, if you've got it in a block, just grate it. It'll be much easier. But I'm gonna use the heat in the pan here to melt that cheese, cling it to the onions, and bung it all in with the couscous. That melted peppery cheese has clung to those charred onions, and we're just gonna pour it straight in with our roasted vegetable couscous. Oh my goodness. Be careful because the cheese is hot, but also enjoy it. Embrace the moment. You are the cheese couscous infuser. Yeah, I am really happy with that. Can I, if I just keep, can you see these little strands? You see that? Those threads? Hopefully the camera's picking it up. Oh my goodness. That, is it actually done? Well, not completely done, although Mrs. B would probably love that. We're gonna cook it in the pan, and if I cook it in the pan now, although it is nice to have it cold, it's gonna be so cold by the time I do the other recipes, I'll do it right at the end, we're just gonna fry it. So, I'll use my pan for the sausages. Boston really likes cheese, there you go. Chicken sausages. I have never, ever, ever had a chicken sausage in my life before. But I did say I was gonna pan fry them, and it's effectively bangers and mash. And the phrase bangers for sausages here in the UK apparently came from the sound that sausages make when you fry them. So um, whether those chicken sausages are gonna bang, I don't know, but we're gonna get them covered in the oil and they should taste blooming good. But whilst they're cooking away, we can do our two other recipes, like pretty darn quick. Dessert is gonna be mini Jaffa cake trifles. This is completely legitimate. I went in there and I saw Paddington Bear on a tub of marmalade. I was like, I, I really wanna use it. There's a guy on Twitter who's like photoshopping Paddington Bear into uh, movies like every day or something. So I thought, yes, marmalade. And this is the marmalade with the actual pieces of orange in it, the shred stuff, free texture. So we've got Jaffa cakes as well. And we've got a tub of uh, good quality creme fraiche, which is apparently just like double cream. I didn't realize this. I wondered why I liked it, but apparently creme fraiche, I need to read this so I get it right. Creme fraiche has a lesser fat content than double cream around 50% less. But it's cream that's had culture added. We should all try and add culture to our lives, make it a slightly more soury flavour and 40% fat. That might contra the uh, Jaffa-ness quite well. And if you don't know what a Jaffa cake is, basically it's a sponge biscuit. There was this huge tax debate. It's quite funny if you Google it. Uh, with an orange marmalade thing in top with a uh, chocolate uh, layer. They're extremely addictive and my friend actually once told me, I don't know if this is a myth, that Manchester United Football Club put Jaffa cakes in their changing rooms at half time. And this was like, I don't know, five years ago, so it's probably changed since then. But anyhow, we're going for sort of that classic trifle thing. So a little bit of spongy base because a trifle has sponge base fingers. Now you could go really crazy with this. Oh yes. And like blend it together. But I'm just gonna have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I might not need all of this, but I'm just gonna stack that up anyway. Bigger pile of that on there. A courtesy topping of the marmalade. Oh, tang, a little bit of tang from the creme fraiche, but the creaminess and that sweet, spongy marmalade chocolate Jaffa-ness. I've never really tried to crumble a Jaffa cake. Oh yes, you can, that's cool. I just thought I'd do it behind there just to see. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Crumbled Jaffa cake on top. It's getting a little bit sticky, not gonna lie, because I'm melting the chocolate with the heat of my hands. But just to give it another variation, that is a Jaffa cake trifle made in minutes. Right, I'll keep that in the fridge. Let's make our drink. Just to say, amongst all that madness, uh, the sausages are cooking well, they brown, so I'm just keeping them rotating. And my potatoes are done, so I'm just gonna keep them in that warm water before we mash. For a drink, we are doing a triple strawberry milkshake. This was gonna actually be triple banana. Walked into the supermarket, first thing they had was uh, strawberries on offer. I like the simple things in life. If you literally just give me a bowl of strawberries and cream, I can be extremely content. I don't need anything else. Don't need Netflix. I don't watch much TV anyway, but I could quite easily go up to a hill, take Boston with me, sit there, and we're both munch on strawberries and cream. Is that good, Boston? You like sound? <laughs> He's licking his lips. This is quite cool because we are making strawberry milkshake, but what's making it the triple strawberry is that we are putting some store-bought strawberry milk in there. We're gonna add in about 100 ml of strawberry yogurt, okay? And that has pieces in it. Woo! <laughs> I just stood on an ice cube, I dropped to the floor. Right, don't need that one. Woo! That's some uh, crushed ice cubes that uh... <laughs> They were going to be whole ones, but we uh, we completely blasted them. Fresh strawberries, 
strawberry milk, strawberry yogurt, triple strawberry milkshake. Yeah! Huh. Hey. Huh. Just remembered, I had something really, really important to tell you. Basically. <laughs> believe it. it was amazing don't tell anyone that it's top secret it'll change your life oh my goodness that is amazing right i'm gonna keep that in the fridge i've been checking on the sausages i think they're done check that out amazing loving the color on there so i'm just gonna rest them on some kitchen towel but yeah hang about i can use that residual oil for this oh please come out come on oh my goodness you're like a bike helmet so all i'm gonna do is press down the couscous. There we go, like that. Ah, awesome. Back on the heat to char its bottom. Right, let's mash the potato. All right, so I'm putting it into a huge mixing bowl. It doesn't have to be, but um, it's just gonna be more fun mashing it in there. You can get a bit more crazy with it. And I'm just gonna add a smidgen of the water it's boiled in, not much. I am gonna give it a little bit of pepper. And this shimmy of salt, I've just come up with this. This might not work, but you know, like salt bay, and it's shimmy bay. <laughs> what? I wanted to season it anyway, but I'm mostly kind of upset that I didn't get to add milk or butter. But I like keeping the skin on. It makes it a little bit more coarsey, a bit more texture. Free texture. So why the heck not? And this is a classic British staple bangers and mash, folks. It'd normally be beef or pork sausages with mashed potato. Um, my mum would normally have peas with it and I'd just lace it in ketchup. But I'll tell you what, on a Saturday afternoon before watching Gladiators and Blind Date, that was pretty much the dream. This was the reason I was in the supermarket for so long. I was stood looking, this is pesto that's gonna go in, which we've stuck with. This is a reduced fat one, but obviously it's got oils in there, so we don't really need the butter. It's got the basil, it's got the flavor, and also the color contrast. I like the idea of that uh, with the chicken and the mash. So that's what I went for. But next to your green pesto, you've got red pesto. There was like a chili pesto, there was a yellow pesto. And then next to that, there was like a whole range. You know, you can get those like pasta stirring sauces. You could add that in with that. And I was like, oh, this is so good. But what I wanted to do was just show you the simplicity of it. And then you can go in the supermarket and go, oh yeah, there was like a mascarpone one, sun-dried tomato, but like pasta sauces that you'd normally stir in with that. In with your mash would be amazing. Every single time. Right, I'm not gonna add too much in at first. I wanna see what this does. It is gonna look a little Shrek-y, I'm not gonna lie. Isn't that like princess? But I do feel like the potato will absorb quite a lot of that flavor. So I'm gonna, yeah, another tablespoon. And I think that will do it. And of course, we could have actually fried the sausages with a bit of pesto on as well. So it's all going rather swimmingly, no pressure, mate, but I'm gonna shove you under the grill now. All right, and it goes, uh, and my grill is notoriously hot. So what I'm saying is this might actually take 10 seconds. It gets, I've got to really, really keep my eye on that. Other than that, uh, I've just plated up my mash, which really, really does look like, um, well, well, it looks like a big pile of moss, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's basil infused mashed potato. I'm gonna just stick some sausages in it quite roughly because that's how you do it. This was the way it was always served to me by my mum and I'm gonna stick to it. I don't know if it was because to try and encourage me and make it more kid friendly. It certainly looks quirky, doesn't it? <laughs> I promise you, this should take, I promise, I don't know yet. I've never had a chicken sausage. Mmm, yeah, that should taste good. <laughs> that looks blooming weird, doesn't it? Oh my gosh. Maybe, does that make it better if I turn it around slightly? <laughs> well, surprisingly, this has taken about five minutes and we're getting a nice brown top on there now. I'm gonna take it out before it gets burnt. It's very, very close to that. Oh my gosh, yes. You see? Oh, look at that. Huh. But seriously, that grill is so angry, a fraction longer. And it's... I was about to say, and it would have sent my smoke alarm off. Um, yeah, let's let it all calm down. Well, here we go then, folks. We have got our four recipes here. Nice, quick and simple. That looks hideous. I'm really intrigued by that. That's gonna be amazing. And I've got a feeling this is gonna be super refreshing too. That is an extremely budget-friendly four recipes. Let's try them out. Let's try the couscous cake first. Oh, it's still soft in the middle, but got that charred top and bottom. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my word. 
I don't know why, but it's giving me like bubble tea vibes because the couscous is still sort of rounded and grainy in there, but softened, so it's really, really nice. But it's just like, you're expecting it to be all sort of compact together, but it's not. All of the couscous is like held its shape and not got compressed. Mmm. And it is that cheese fusing it together. It's not too greasy, not too oily, and the onion packs a punch. That is blooming gorgeous. If I wasn't filming a video right now and I was actually sat eating this, I might have a little bit of like hot sauce on the side just to dunk with it, but it doesn't necessarily need it. And there are so many ways like we discussed to take this. So I really think you should try it. So let's try this. Um, it, it's gonna look a lot worse than actually. I'm gonna try the mash on its own. Mmm. Oh wow, that's great. Oh, <laughs> it's a subtle flavor in there. It's not too overpowering. I'll probably taste the mash as you're adding the pesto in or whatever else you're adding in. Because right now, this is at that point where my kids and Mrs. B would probably like it. It's quite subtle, but I think I probably want the flavor a teeny bit more intensive. And it does look like some sort of Halloween dish. Mm. Oh, well that's good. That's really good, folks. My mum never used to make mashed potato with the peel on, but for me, it's like that nostalgia ramped up with a little bit of cheeky peel on there and the pesto, the nutty flavor, the basil running through it. And it's not missing the milk or the butter in that it's enough flavor from the pesto in there. I feel like I should have made this for Halloween though. <laughs> Gonna cleanse the palate with my, this has been in the fridge, nice and cool triple strawberry milkshake. Mmm. Oh wow. That's like a blast of freshness. It was like eating that nature's cereal again from the last TikTok video. You've got the smoothness of the milk in there. Then you've got like this slight sharpness of the yogurt. And then the actual pieces of real strawberry that we whizzed up has given it a slight seed. There's a delicate sharpness to it, but a sweet creaminess with it. We've just turned that strawberry milk up to 11. And of course you can play around with the combo. So if you want it a little bit more tangy, add some more yogurt or slightly more creamy, add more milk, more strawberries, ratio it up, but amazing. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna hate this. Um, so we've got the marmalade, we've got the creme fraiche and Jaffa cake there. Let's try and get a good old dollop of everything like that all together. Mmm. You're not getting any sort of sour or bitterness from the creme fraiche at all, actually. I think the sweetness from the marmalade is overriding that. And there's like a delicate chocolate spongy tang from the Jaffa cake. Mmm. It's like you're driving your taste buds in a car through a tunnel and you're sort of like hitting this wall. This, I don't know where this is going, but basically all the, along the taste journey of the orange and the creamy tang, there's like little waves of chocolate pieces from where we crumbled the Jaffa cake and that's just keeping it all together. I don't know what that even makes sense. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's phenomenal. Now, I love this playlist so much and this is just one of them. I think we've done like quite a lot of them. There's a playlist so do check it out for some more ideas and stuff. I've got loads more to come. I might tweak it to add a few more ingredients here or there. And I'll be completely honest if there was one that I wanted to improve and I could eat all of these. Of course they can all have improvements, but that's where you come in. So if you try any of these or any of the adaptions I suggested, do send me a photo on social media. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and make sure if you are, your notifications are turned on. Oh, that is so, that is like an absolute blast of refreshment. Like, oh, like judgment day from Terminator 2 in a good way. Cheers for watching folks. I'll get all these recipes typed up now. Check them out on my website and I'll see you very soon. Bye bye. Free flavor.